So here I am. I'm, I'm standing out front of the house that I grew up in, just to, just to be here. And um, it would be a shame if they say no. I am. Um, I, I, I'm feeling a bit nervous. Um, all right, fuck. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. As a man in today's society, yeah. Yeah, what are the values and how do you, you know, what, are, what, are, what do we aim for? What's your thoughts on what a, you think a man should be? Or that's what kind of man you want to be? I think the strongest a man could be is all that in this. That's everything. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I totally agree, and I just—that's such a beautiful way to put it. That um, strongest a man can be is him being all that he can be, and it's very brave to be able to go. Well, here I am, and yeah. here's all my vulnerabilities. And these are the, these are because I keep think I don't know. I just keep coming up with these are different thoughts mm. about what I'm embarking on here, mm -hmm. not just physically, but what I really want to achieve. Like I said, it's, I just want to find myself. But where do I go when I don't know what I'm looking for? start? Do I tell you that I was born with Talipes equinovarus, otherwise known as club feet? That I was in and out of hospital as the doctors and surgeons tried to straighten my feet so I could walk? And the cast they put on my legs was too tight, subsequently restricting the flow of blood through my legs and I almost lost my feet? Or later on when I wore braces just like Forrest Gump until I could walk on my own? You could guess which feet belonged to me. Or do I tell you I was the third born out of five brothers? Is middle child syndrome a thing? Or that I had blonde hair until the age of three? Or later on when I taught my little brother Woodsy how to use matches? And coincidentally our house was burnt to the ground on that very same day? Or the fact it was government housing, his dad fixed cars for minimum wage, so we could barely afford the food on our plate, let alone a house. In fact, we were so poor that when we ran out of toilet paper, when we ran out of toilet paper and steal it from the from the public toilets. Yeah, I do remember that. Well, you know, when you gotta go, you gotta go. You, you gotta have toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> Landed in NZ. I'm gonna try and get my bag and get the fuck out of here. Okay. Need to find where I catch Abe. Don't know. The area where the Uber picked you up. Oh, no. Yeah, no. The other She's going down I'll there now. Okay, so you order it from here. And thank you, I appreciate that. Right. 
Auckland is the largest city in New Zealand. We lived in this really nice looking street, but it was the kind of neighborhood that if you lift your shoes out on, on the balcony, uh, that would get stolen overnight. So it was a pretty rough neighborhood. I'm walking down the street that I grew up on, and um, it's actually a really cool looking street. So here I am. I'm, I'm standing out front of the house that I grew up in. I've come a long way just to just to, just to be here, and um, it would be a shame if they say no. I am. Um, I, I I'm feeling a bit nervous. Um, all right, fuck. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. Fuck it. Here we go. I guess. Hello. Hi, my name's John. I just wanted to let you know I was just, I'm just going to be out the front here doing some filming. I'm out on the road here. Oh, okay. I used to live in this house. So. <laughs> Yeah, a long time ago. So. I bought them some chocolate. So maybe if they like chocolate, then they'll be more inclined to say yes. Just on the street here, mm. and I brought you some chocolate. I hope you like um, Black Forest. <laughs> Please accept it. Aww, thank you. Thank you. Aww, sweet. Is that okay? Mm. Okay, great. I don't know what I expect to achieve coming here, but um, you know, I've it, it's brought up a lot of feelings, and I, I don't really know how to describe them. So yeah, I, I was I was born in that room, room just there. Also to describe my childhood, it would explain all the scars on my knees and my elbows because just across the road here, uh, we lived on this sweet. So we live at the top of a sweet hill, and this was our favorite hill to go down. Pretty much anything that we had with wheels, we'd go down this hill. Skateboard, uh, bikes, go-karts, pram, and we'll probably make it about halfway. We'll back up the hill crying. I've come up with an idea. First I need to go and get a skateboard, so... Hello. Thank you, how are you? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, you too. What a school. And I'm gonna attempt to I'm gonna attempt to go down the hill and hopefully make it to the bottom. Now I need to get a feel for my new skateboard. The last thing I want is broken bones. I don't trust the skateboard.
there's lots of correlation between people who have had family breakups and depression or anxiety. Okay. It's very like you have a higher chance of developing that in adulthood when your parents have split up. My parents were young and they did really good under the circumstances. But young people make dumb choices. And I was 12 years old when things got really bad. It was one of those breakups that there was, there was just sh the shouting. When the doors would slam, we'd, we'd feel it in, in our heart. You just, you know, and just go like that. So, you know, our house was like, it was like, it was like a war zone. I was just a kid. We were just kids. So we, 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 we were just, we were just, we were just sad that our family's becoming a broken home. The mum wanted nothing to do with dad and he had to go. You know, dad left and Warwick went with dad and the rest of us stayed with mum. She was dealing with, you know, a plethora of emotions that, that you go through, you know, anger, betrayal. From this very moment, mum would refuse all contact from dad. The impact of you know, of a 20 year relationship coming to a sudden end and in such a bad way. So with dad gone, you know, how are we going to pay for food, school, school uniforms? Mum was on welfare. The entire welfare payment would only cover rent and then we had nothing left. Absolutely all my benefit went on rent. It was so bad that, you know when you go to the cupboard and you open the cupboard and there's nothing. Mum somehow, she threw together like, it was like a, a tuna pasta bake. You know, we were sitting there, we were all hungry and we were just, you could smell it and waiting for it to finish baking in the oven. Just as Mum was pulling it out of the oven, she, she slipped. She was like apologizing. I'm like, I'm so sorry. And she gets down on her knees and she starts to kind of go and, you know, starts picking it up, trying to get it off the floor. And mum, trying to snap her out of it, like, mum, mum, we, we can't eat that. And she's like, why? It's just been on the floor for like a few seconds. And I said to her, mum, there's this glass, this glass through it now. We, we can't eat that. She just felt, she felt really foolish for that oversight and she, she just, you know, she just sat there on her knees and just, she just broke down crying and, you know, she felt so sorry that she'd ruined our last, our last meal and, you know, I, it wasn't, I felt so sorry for her. That, that's how, that's what our situation was like. It was like that. You know, every day, every week. But um, yeah, it didn't stop there. The situation, the situation got worse. Yeah, I mean, you know, I wonder how my brothers feel. Yeah. You know, uh, when I tell the story, and worse. Because I'm going to. Go ahead. Worse. It's going to have an effect on them. It's unbelievable what you had to go through, what they had to go through, what mum had to go through. It's worse, to the point where, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't wish this situation upon my worst enemies or upon anyone. 